How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Omari Shakur. I'm a candidate for the mayor of the city of Newburgh. And that's why I'm at this meeting tonight. Because this is more than just an educational problem. This is, like she said, a parental problem. This is a political problem. This is a citywide problem. Um, I'm on the streets every day registering our young people, and I'm talking to them every day. And on any scale, they, on any given school day, there's 30 to 40 to 50 kids I'm seeing out on the streets supposedly in school. Where are the truant officers? Or would it be another? But like she said, this is not just an educational problem, this is a parental problem first. It's because we have to care about our children. Because in the last five years, I have been told with 30 or 40 funerals that kids that should have been in school, you know, or could have benefited, benefited from our educational process, and they wouldn't be in graves today if we as parents did what we supposed to do. That's right. You know, we can blame the, and we can blame the educational right. system because there's a lot of blame to go around, but one of the things, because I'm a candidate for mayor, we're not looking for blaming anybody, we're looking for solutions. See, because a lot of people, we sit here all night talking about what happened, but what can we do to stop this problem? Because like I said, the end result, our children are dying and they're going to prison at alarming rates. She made a comment about the kids wearing two uniforms every year. That, that sounded funny, but if they go to prison, they're going to have two pair of pants and two pair of shirts anyway. So they can wear it out here and you can give it to them, or if they have some place where they will go and get it for free. So one of the things, like I said, I'd like to, um, as a candidate for mayor, we are reaching out to the educational system, because I'm aware that a thousand kids are, being, are going as, um, to school as seniors, but 300 of these kids are being dropped out, or, and so that becomes a city problem. So that's why I'm speaking on it, because like I said, it's an educational problem, but becomes a city problem, becomes a, a parental problem, because like I said, these are our children now, because most likely the kids that are being dropped out are kids of color. Mm -hmm. And so these are our kids. And so what are we going to do? You know, this is why I'm asking the community, what are we going to do? And like I said, we're working on one of our solutions as the candidate for mayor. We're working on creating an infrastructure, educationally, technically, and recreational for our children to become involved, because they are future. I'm 56 years old. I'm telling these young people the reason I ran because I've been asking the young people of our community to step up. And because they've been asking me, I registered over 1,500 young people in our community. And so they asked me to run because they feel that I can represent them. And I feel I can do the job as mayor, but like I said, it's not what I'm going to do because the mayor doesn't run the city. See, this, this city is run by a three to two vote. So even if I do become mayor, it's not like I'm going to make all these residents. We going, it's what we going to do. See, because what, what I, I ran for county legislator two years ago, and my, and my promise to the young people, win or lose, I will be back out here helping you the next day. So win or lose this, I will still be out here helping with my children. Because I lost a child to these streets. And I understand the grief of losing a child. And I wouldn't want nobody in this room to lose a child. But like I said, this is not about pointing the finger at nobody. I come up here as a candidate to understand that we are opening doors to the educational system, to the parents. We're working with everybody, our candidacy, to make changes in the city of Newburgh. So I'd like to thank everybody for being at this meeting, because that shows you care. But there's another meeting that 90 Broadway y'all need to come to, too, because one of the reasons why there happen so many problems is the educational system, because the political system is not caring either about the city. And there are a lot of funds coming into the city for our children. And where is it going? So thank you. And like I said, come up with some solutions. Because we can sit here all night and talk about the problem. But I would like to hear what are the solutions or what are we going to do about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I do feel like it all starts at home. 
Gerard, my son's name is Gerard. He started on varsity. They pulled him up as an eighth grader. I have my concerns about that because of the age difference between the kids that were there then and, and, and himself and what he would be exposed to prematurely. However, you know, dealing with Dino and dealing with Carrie Bunce, I had their support. And I'm here to support them today, whether people agree with it or they don't. Because the fact is, is that some of the ownership does belong to the parents, and I'm not saying the school district is perfect, but I'm also saying that the parents and the students alike have some ownership to this whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. This whole thing going on for months and months and months has made me sick. Because you know what? My son is busting his tail to try to be successful. He has learned from the people before him, and I thank God for that. Because he's going to summer school two seasons in a row, to take classes over that he has already passed to raise his GPA so that he is Division I now. All right, all right. So all right. for that, I said from the beginning, Carrie Bunce has always called me. She has always said to me, he needs to go to this review class. We need to get him to do this. We need to get him to do that. And I happen to support her. And, and I hate to see those two be, to lose their jobs because of this, because Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm educated, too. I was educated through this school. And the fact of the matter is, is that this is a problem that goes on not only in Newburgh, but it goes on in Monroe Woodbury, it goes on in Minnesink Valley, it goes on in Washingtonville, and every other school in the nation. That's just the way it goes. Is it right? Maybe not. However, they were trying to make some changes. They instituted mandatory tutoring classes. Does anybody? I was there. So maybe nobody else was to, to stand up for that basketball team, but I was there because my son is the last of the state championship team, and he's still playing today. He's a senior this year. All right. And you know what? Now the problem is is that the Division I coaches, we visited five colleges this year. The coaches that are interested are losing interest because of all the nonsense that is going on here and all the publication of it. But really, it goes for the community. We all need to help our kids. It goes to the parents, and you can't tell me that you're not aware that your kids are cutting classes. That's they right. send a letter if they walk over the threshold 30 seconds late. That's just the way that it goes. So I, I had to. I, I, it has bothered me and bothered me and bothered me. I left work early. I gave one of the other nurses report before relief even got there because I felt like I had to, at, the, at this last opportunity, make a stand and say that I do not agree with those two being disciplined because of the fact that they've only been there three years. Mm -hmm. You know what, they were trying to make changes. I know that there was a cut made by the coach, one of those kids, and we lost the section to Minnesota St. Valley. The next year, suddenly he's back on the team because they came down on him. I really don't feel like, you know what, this is once I saw her, still calling about kids that were no longer in the school to see if scholarships were still available for them. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like they should be reprimanded for All that right. because it goes deeper than that. Yes. Hello, my name is Sharon Coleman and I live at Fort Lanza Drive. Um, I'm here also to speak on behalf of Cardi Bond. And I have to say that I really thank God for her. Um, I actually just met her about a year and a half ago, and Kari Bunce is the most loving, caring, well-rounded, honest, dedicated. I mean, she loves the kids with her whole heart. She's genuine with everything that she do. I mean, there is nothing that she would not do to help your child to succeed. I have now a teenager and I have one that's 21. Had Kari been there for my son, he would have graduated, but he didn't. That's also on him. But you know what? I believe that it also has to do with some of the people in the school. My daughter's guidance counselor had given me no information as far as how many credits she was short, or what classes she needed to take to pick up, or I mean, anything like that. When my daughter, she told me, she's like, Mom, Kari, Miss Bunce. I said, who is this girl, Miss Bunce? She kept telling me about Miss Bunce. So I took it upon myself, and I actually called Miss Bunce. I asked to speak with this Miss Bunce. When I spoke with her, she said that she would look into it. I thought she was going to brush me off, just like my daughter's guidance counselor. But she didn't. 
She called me back. She said, look, Ms. Coleman, it's this, this, that, and the other. She said, Demaya needs to be in all these classes. And if she doesn't be in all these classes, she won't get what she needs to graduate. All right? My, my daughter's um, camp, camp, guidance counselor gave her two free periods and some other just lunch classes that she wouldn't even have graduated if I left it like that. Carla told me, no, you push it. You do what you got to do. You get in there and you talk to her. I did that. I made the changes. My daughter did not have one lunch period. She went through the entire year with not one lunch period, without any free period, and she graduated. Because Ms. Bunce stayed on her. She went to Ms. Bunce and Ms. said, Ms. Bunce, I'm low in my global. Ms. Bunce called me. She said, you know what? You need to talk to Florence Harvey. You get him to tutor her, and she will be able to pass. I did just that. Just what she told me. I contacted Torrance Harvey, and I asked him, I said, will you tutor my daughter? He tutored my daughter, and did my daughter graduate? My daughter is a graduate. Yeah. So I'm here to say, whatever you guys are trying to do with one, I think it's wrong. I mean, these kids, they need her. Just like I said, she is dedicated to the kids. She loves these kids. She goes over and beyond. She takes time out from her family to help these kids. When kids are in the hospital, kids are sick, kids can't even get to school, she falls. She goes to visit. She does what, some, what a parent sometimes wouldn't even do for their kids. So how can you fire or discipline somebody that cares so much more for somebody else's kid and you don't even care for your kid that much? Exactly. Why would you do that? You're going to let go somebody that has so much in their heart to give to somebody else. She takes time from her own just to make sure that your kids can be all that they can be. Yes. So that they can grow up and be educated and successful. Okay. Don't do that to her. She doesn't deserve it. All right. She doesn't. She's been there when nobody else was. It instituted so many things. Who's going to do that now if you let her go? You think the rate is lower now? It's going to drop way lower than what it is now. So I plead to you. I bet you because I love the woman. She got my daughter at it in a I love her. All right. Yes. All right, thank you.